Hey folks, this is Philip with the Everyday Fighter Podcast, where we share stories and insights of everyday fighters just like you. Today I'm talking with Jonathan Van Huysen. Jonathan is a husband and a father of four. Uh, we talk about how he decided to get back into martial arts from his previous experience as, as a child, but now as an adult, wanting to do something about his dad bod. But even beyond that, using martial arts as a way for his family to connect with each other. So looking forward to sharing that with you. But before I do, I wanted to give you two episode spotlights today. The first one is Steve Hartman and his segment On the Road that appears on the CBS Evening News on Sundays. And if you're not familiar with this segment, it's just amazing to me. It's one of my favorite things ever online. And what they do is Steve travels the country. He looks for individuals or organizations that are just doing great things for their communities. And uh, the really just heartwarming segments um, really shows you all the good that people are capable of doing, um, even in, in small town America. So I uh, encourage you, if you haven't already, to check them out. The second spotlight I wanted to share with you is a little bit closer to home. And um, if you didn't listen to it, a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed Dr. Megan Horn. Uh, Dr. Horn is a clinical psychologist, but she is also a self-defense instructor, specifically with Krav Maga. And um, that was a great episode for me just because I have four girls myself. <laughs> and um, self-defense for women is a subject that is really near and dear to my heart because I want my girls to have the uh, best resources possible in that particular area. So um, that episode with her was really fascinating for me and um, I thought really important to continue to explore. So I had asked uh, Dr. Horn if that's something she'd be willing to do and she said yes. So what we've got planned for you in November is a two-part webinar series. The first webinar is going to address just women's self-defense as a whole, uh, what the state of it is, why it's important, and the things to consider if uh, you or someone you love is considering taking one of those classes. The second topic is going to be more geared towards martial arts and self-defense instructors that are looking to improve upon the things that are currently delivering. I know that's something for me as a martial arts instructor that I felt I really needed a lot more help with. So beyond just the techniques themselves, what are the psychological challenges that I'm faced with, especially when it comes to women and even people that have been through trauma in the past? And that's something that Dr. Horn specializes in as far as her um, clinical um, practice. So really looking forward to sharing those um, webinar sessions with you. We're still narrowing down the details for all those, but we have the dates. It's going; They're going to be on the 16th and the 30th of November, probably around 1 p.m. Eastern. But again, we're still nailing everything down as far as not only the times, but also how you would be able to listen to it live, but also interact with us, submit your questions and comments there. So again, real looking forward to sharing that with you. So those are our episode spotlights. Let's jump into the interview with Jonathan Van Huysen. Yeah, I actually grew up in California. Um, I'm in Texas now, but only been here about two years. Um, and when I was little, I had really bad allergies. So I would do like soccer and like outdoor stuff. And then um, as a result of my allergies, my parents stuck me in karate when I was 
I don't know, seven or eight years old. So they took you out of the team sports and just put you into to karate? Yeah, because it was indoors, um, you know, so out of the pollen and grass and stuff like that. Um, and then I, I kind of did martial arts off and on, mostly like Taekwondo style um, throughout my entire life, but never like seriously. Um, and then, um, you know, when I, when I grew up and got married and had kids, um, I wasn't really doing any martial arts in my, I'm going to say in my 20s. And, um, you know, I, I started to develop a dad bod and uh, just kind of went with that. Uh, you know, it's, it's well, you know, uh, you know, uh, Sylvester Stallone is a dad. So are you talking about that kind of dad bod or? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the undesirable. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sort of clarify. Yeah, I, I had a gut. I wasn't uh, I wasn't in the best shape of my life. Um, I was just working too hard, stressed out about rent and all that stuff. Um, we had a kid. Uh, we have four kids now, but at the time we only had one kid. And yeah, you know, I just wasn't taking care of myself um, like I like I needed to be. Um, and then fast forward to, it was only about seven or eight years ago and my, she's now 13. She, so let me think. So she must've been six or seven. Um, we lived in Orange County and our mailbox was maybe 50 yards from our front door. And I, I just looked at her and I said, Hey, let's, let's go get the mail. And, uh, you know, we kind of looked at each other with that knowing look and and you know we started walking a little faster and, <laughs> walked a little faster. And, I, and before you know it we're like running we're like racing to the uh mailbox to go get the mail mm. um and then we raced back because you know that's what seven-year-olds do mm. and i i won because my ego uh oh I, I wasn't i wasn't about to let a seven-year-old beat me you know um i i won but Man, I, I was so out of breath. I was like, I'm exhausted. I'm just, I'm done. I don't, like, that was it for me for the evening. You know, my, my typical evening would be I'd, I'd walk in the door and my wife would have dinner ready and uh, I might play with the kids for a little bit, but more often than not, I'd hang out on the couch or, you know, do something like that. And so that particular day stands out in my mind as, the the day where where I was like, I gotta do something about this. Like this is not okay to you know, it's fifty yards there, fifty yards back, hundred yards. Like it's okay to be winded, but I should not be just totally exhausted and like done for the day. So so that's the day that kind of stands out in my mind where I thought something's gotta change. I got is something um so in parallel with that our second daughter has uh speech issues so she'd been going to the speech therapist and we've been looking for ways um to to help her out and so um one of the things that her speech therapist told us was you have to strengthen her core because all of your speech comes from your core and having a strong core you know it's not going to fix everything but it's going to help hmm. so her speech therapist actually told us hey why don't you try putting her in mma and we're like what <laughs> okay <laughs> like, All right. yeah, do, do you have can, it, can we see your credentials again yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, whatever, you know, it's, they had a one month free trial or something at the MMA. So we're like, whatever, I'm game for anything. You know, we'll, we'll give it a try. If it doesn't work out, you know, what's the worst that could happen? So we had been taking her to the speech therapist. And then this thing with my other daughter where I, I was out of breath happened. And so I was like, well, I don't want to start running because I get bored running. I used to do that. Um, I don't want to lift heavy weights. Uh, I just don't really have time to go to the gym and I had all these excuses, but 
since my daughter was going to MMA, I was like, well, that looks kind of fun. Maybe I'll try that. So I started going. It's the Uf it was LA Boxing at the time. Now it's UFC gym. And so I started going there. They have like a 6 a.m. class or 6.30 a.m. class or something like that. And you just put on the boxing gloves. And it's it's cardio kickboxing is, is what I started off doing. Um, and and uh, I did that. And like I couldn't, like a 20, 30 minutes into the class, I was just spent. Mm. And, you know, same thing. How long thing was as, the class? It was an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't make it an hour, but okay. everybody else did, and I was just done. And like, I actually went in the bathroom, and I was like on the verge of throwing up. Like, I was just, I was just done, you know. But it, you know, you have that certain pride where, like, no, I gotta make it. I gotta, I gotta get through this. I gotta do this. And um, I just remember like thinking, this is not okay. I have to be able to at least do a cardio kickboxing class. So I, I did the cardio kickboxing, and my goal for, like, the first three months was just to make it for the entire hour of the class. Mm. Um, and and it, it was led by a um, – he's a UFC guy. Um, he's an MMA cage fighter, and he'd show us stuff. And then I, I got to working with him, uh, and we'd spar off to the side, and he'd, he'd do private lessons and stuff. And I was like, hey, this is this is kind of fun so um then we got in the ring and started sparring with some guys and they started offering more sparring classes so i started doing that and it turned into kind of a, a thai kickboxing class so i started doing that in addition to the cardio kickboxing and you know then started seeing some results uh you know my energy's going up my weight's going down um, and I'm just able to enjoy life more and you get your and daughter to, and say, Hey, uh, you fancy a race? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, are you sure? Cause I don't know if I can beat you now. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you, then you've got the other, uh, side benefits where, you know, I, I'm, I'm relieving stress while I'm hitting something. Hmm. In, in an acceptable manner and you know I'm, I'm less irritable I'm I'm in a good mood more often and I'm like hey this is all right I, I'm kind of enjoying this so um, then they started offering Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes so I started doing that too next thing you know I was going every day in, in some form or another uh, every weekday anyway um, so I was going like four or five times a week sometimes twice a day um, just doing stuff. I was, if I wasn't doing cardio kickboxing, I was doing Thai kickboxing. If I wasn't doing that, I was doing jujitsu. So, um, just kind of became a, a gym rat and, and, uh, started doing that. Um, so that's, that's kind of how I started and, and started doing it seriously. Um, and like I said, that was like seven or eight years ago. I don't remember exactly when that was. Um, and then when was it about 2015, I think my wife decided she wanted to do martial arts, but she didn't want to do the Thai kickboxing. I mean, we just get in the ring and beat on each other. That's more exciting than, than what she was interested in. So, um, then our other kids wanted to do it if she was going to do it. So they signed up at, a, um, you know what Tang Sudo is? Yes. Okay, so it. it's a Korean martial arts, similar to Taekwondo. Um, so they signed up for a Tang Sudo class and started doing that. Um, and, you know, so they were doing their thing over there, and I was like, hey. Um, you know, so a couple things happened then. I, I, I wanted to be with my family. Um, you know, if they're all doing it, I was like, all right. Because they're doing it at a different studio, right? They weren't coming to your gym. No, they weren't yeah. coming to the gym. They were... Even your daughter was she already over it <laughs> at that point? Like the the speech, I don't know if it did it help at all or <laughs> it, it did. Okay, at least we think it did. Okay, uh, you know we we were doing so much for her. It's kind of hard to tell in hindsight what helped and what didn't. But but she didn't continue. She eventually she stopped going after the month or something. Or yeah, no, she she did it for like two years. Wow. 
but then she was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. It, it really is kind of a guy thing, you know, the kickboxing where, you know, you just beat up on heavy back. It's, it's kind of a guy thing and she was kind of done. So, um, but then when this, uh, opportunity for the Tang Sudo came up, they all went and did that. And so I'm kind of looking at my family like, ah, you know, I, I think that's something I want to do with my family. And so as, as much as I enjoy the, the uh, gym experience that I'm doing, I, I felt like it would be more valuable to do martial arts with my family um, and kind of instill that with them. And um, at the same time, what was happening with the jujitsu is that we'd have like a black belt come in and show us these like 15 move sequences where I was just like, well, I, I, it would, that was really cool, but I can't do that. Um, so I wanted some sort of progression. I wanted some sort of, you know, easy to more difficult sequence that I could follow and, and know that it was going to go step by step. So I was kind of looking for something a little bit different, and that was right around the same time that the Tang Sudo came up. Yeah. So I switched over. Um, I did both Tang Sudo and the gym for a little while, for like six months, and then um, I switched over and started doing Tang Sudo with my family. Yeah. And that just kind of became our thing. Uh, my oldest daughter was in dance. We stopped doing that. Um, you know, we stopped swimming classes. You know, we, we pretty much stopped everything, and we decided, all right, karate is what we're doing as a family. That's that's what we're doing. Mm. So we were there all the time. You know, we were we were that family that's that's just there at, at the studio, just doing their thing. Um, and you know, we practice it. We my daughter was on the um, what do you call it? The competition team and the, the dem demonstration team that they had and you know we were we were into it and you know we just decided this is what we're doing um so we did that for like two years and that brings us right up to 2016 and in 2016 we got an opportunity with my company to move to texas which is something we've been looking to do uh, so this everything up to now is in orange county california and um, so we we moved to Texas, and which makes the commute to our studio in Orange County pretty long. <laughs> a little bit. And, yeah, a little, yeah. little bit. Even even with frequent flyer miles. It, it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we we looked for a studio here, and we found a Taekwondo. Taekwondo is pretty similar to Tang Sudo, mm. or similar enough, anyways. Um, so we found a studio that offers um, Taekwondo and Jiu Jitsu mm. um, and that's who we're with now. So um, I'm enjoying that. So we're into it two years here and uh, my daughter's going up for her black belt in October and in Taekwondo mm -hmm. and I go up for my Taekwondo black belt in April of next year. And been doing jujitsu for about two years and um, going strong. I'm I'm a blue belt now, so I just got my blue belt in jujitsu in April, awesome. and uh, I'm I'm starting to lead some of the classes here for the lower belts and and do that and uh, just having a good time. And you you know you don't realize how far you've come mm. until. You know, you don't realize the progression. You look back on it, and I, and I think, man, I, I don't deserve to be a blue belt. I, I'm not talented enough to be a blue belt. But, uh, you know, last night I was rolling with a guy who's, I'm going to guess, he's 250, 260 pounds. Yeah. And I, I tapped him out. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I guess I do know something. All right, I'm, I'm doing all right. So. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like one of those things. You don't notice your own kids growing up from one week to the next, but if you're if, if you're away from them for a while and then come back, then you see the growth. And, and I think it's the same here. You don't see the growth in your martial arts journey mm -hmm. unless something like that happens, where you you know something that you wouldn't have been able to do prior 
you know, now all of a sudden I can tap out a much bigger man than myself. Well, I think it's a mindset too, uh, yeah. right? Because, I mean, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen a lot of this where there are people on the other side of that where they think, I should, he hasn't given me my belt. I should have my belt now. I deserve it right. kind of a thing, which is very different from what you're talking about. And I, I've, I've felt it myself <laughs> where, you know, my, my, uh, my teachers say, you know, skip this belt or, you know, or I'm giving this to you or whatever. And I'm like, Really, I just, I don't, I feel off about it. Yeah. You know, like it felt like I, I didn't, I didn't earn it in some way. And I think, and again, I mean, like, you know, that's, I think that's for me anyway, that's a rarer sight to see than the former. You know, some people are just like go, go with, you know, whatever. They just go with the flow and whatever they say. But then, you know, there's the side where, you know, you're talking about people that are almost, they've got this, um, I don't forget the word, but I mean, they feel like they're they're they they deserve it, right? Yeah. They feel like uh, they're they're entitled to entitled. it, right? But then there's the other side, which is you know again rarer, where it's like well, you almost you almost don't want the belt, you know? Yeah. You almost like it feels like it's heavier on you. And I remember like one of my uh, you know my, my first teacher, he said it, and it wasn't in this context that we're talking about it, but it was just that you know whenever we get promoted, he's like. If you feel like it's it's a little bit of a burden on you to getting this promotion, it should feel that way. It should feel a little bit heavier because you know we're not. It's 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 a, a one. It's a recognition, but it's also a reminder that you've got you're always there's always another level to go to. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I can absolutely appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, and I think it also means that you're taking it seriously, right? You're not just checking something off the list and you know all right next you know it's 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 an indication that it means something to you if you feel that way i believe well let me let me contrast that then with your initial like when you were a kid like your first foray into karate right uh, and getting into those classes i mean did you always kind of have this mindset with it or was that something that was different back then where it was checking the boxes or i mean they pulled you out of your, your regular sports and then yeah. put you into this. So was there an acceptance of like, yeah, let's do this, or was there otherwise? <laughs> no, I, I, honestly, I, I wasn't into it when I was a kid. It was just like, all right, you know, mom and dad took me to the karate studio, so here I am, and all right, I guess that karate studio, all, this is what we do, and, you know, just kind of going through the motions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't really own it until... Um, I was an adult until I started with the LA boxing. Well, let me ask you then. I mean, because you got the four uh, kids now, are all of them in uh, the Tang Sudo then? Or okay, yeah, okay. So, how does that inform your like your experience? How does that inform the way that you approach it with your kids and how they they approach it? Um, is that is that a concern for you that they might just be checking checking the boxes or just kind of going with the flow? Um, it, it's it's both. Um, so I, I told them they don't have to go to black belt. Um, but, and especially for our girls, we have two girls, two boys. Um, I I want them to be able to defend themselves when they get old. That's important to me. So I, I told them you have to go up to a certain rank so that I know that if somebody approaches you, and doesn't have the best intentions in mind, you at least have a chance that you can defend yourself, right? Um, But to me, if somebody goes after their black belt, like, that's their thing. That's what they're into. That's their hobby. And I've told them that's optional. They don't have to get the black belt. But they need to be able to defend themselves. And um, so far, our two boys really enjoy it. and our oldest daughter enjoys it. Our our second child, our our second daughter, she's not into it, um, and she actually dropped out recently. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, she she does piano now, and that's much more her style. And how old is she? She's eleven. So uh, she made it up to the belt I am currently. So she made it up to about a year out from being a black belt. And then she said, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm. I said, all right, you've made it far enough. You, you know, I, I feel like you know what you're doing. Yeah. 
and, and I'm not going to make you continue. So she does piano now, um, and that's that's much more her style, much more her speed. So okay, it's a tough mm -hmm. balance. Uh, I mean, like it particularly is. when you're talking about your intents for uh, your intent for them being in this, particularly for your daughters, right? It's like, hey, right. want to get because it's not just the moves, right? Yeah. There's also that resiliency that is required, particularly in self-defense situations, right? Right, where it's like. You know, somebody's ha is, is, something's happening to you, and it's like you, you, something. Well, there's the emotional bit of it as well, right. the, the shock of, and you got to get over that. Very difficult to train that bit, right? It Particularly is. in, oh, it's a nice air conditioned dojo. We've got a soft floor here, whatever. So that's one thing where you know it's it can be challenging in that setting to get that emotional component in there. Right. But then even after the emotional component, it's just like that resiliency of like, you know, I'm doing, I, I am, I'm going to make it right. Or not today, MF or, you know, it's just, you know, just kind of that where, um, you know, you hope they get that a little bit and, you know, definitely martial arts is not the only way to kind of get that resiliency and to get, right. you know, to kind of get that, um, that intensity of focus on, even surviving, right? <laughs> like, yeah. well, they, you know, this, it, you know, it's it just having those kinds of, of stakes. But then, you know, it's um, it's also different. It's 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 uh, it's you know, sometimes you you can get that in 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 less physical um, environments. But how much does that translate into when you actually have to move around in, in that type of thing? I mean, it just adds a whole new complication to it. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. How is your how is your wife with it? Is she um I mean is she enjoying it? Is this, is this just something that uh you know is, is does she have that same mindset as you do in terms of the you know progression and, and ownership of it and moving forward? Not really. Uh and actually I have to backtrack a little bit. So she was in a car accident in April. Oh, this past April, okay. And yeah, yeah, April 2018. So she's actually not doing uh, karate with us at the moment. Uh, so she's just kind of taking a couple month break. But um, even before that, like she she wasn't really into it. Like she tried it for a little while. She enjoyed it, but she doesn't like own it like like I do. Like you know, that's that's what I enjoy doing. Like if if I if if we've got an afternoon to go kill. And I got to go do something that's like, all right, you know, you want to go to the gym, you want to go to the dojo, oh, let's go to the dojo. You know, yeah. that's that's just what I enjoy doing. I might call up somebody and go, hey, you want to roll a couple rounds or something like that. And she's like, I'm going to watch TV or, you know, whatever she does. Um, so I, 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 I like to not go the extra mile, but I, I'll seek out excuses to go to the dojo and, and roll with one of the guys and you know just that's that's how i vent that's how i work off my whatever you call it uh you know just extra energy or you know and that's just what i do um so yeah she she's not as into it as as i am do you do uh uh I mean, it sounds like you're very uh, entrenched in the martial arts, even like you know before your your move, and even when you're living in California. Were there other kind of sports that you were into as well, or it was pretty much let's just let, I'm just gonna do martial arts. I did soccer. Um, I, I did quite a bit of soccer growing up. My dad's from Holland, so you know soccer, Holland, kind of go together. Dutch kick uh, boxing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry, it helps actually. I, I can hit that bag like crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So it, uh, is it like um, so you did you did a little bit even like uh, growing up, but I mean as an adult, were you doing or you doing oh. pickup games and that type of thing or? No, um, I did some mountain biking when we lived in California, but Texas is pretty flat, mm. so you know my mountain bike is just mostly sat in the garage and not got a whole lot of activity. Um, but that's about it. I just mountain biking and and uh, martial arts is really all I have done as an adult. Because it's one of the things that I try to convey, you know, as I talk to folks about my experiences with it and why I'm like, 
I'm so hooked, you know, is that um, there's just something visceral, uh, just natural, uh, I think, about hitting the bag. You know, it's not even hitting the bag. It's even, I mean, call it what it is. It's violence, quite frankly. It is. You know, whether it's with somebody in a controlled setting, right? You know, you, you know mouthpieces on or whatever. But even with, if it's just against a, a bag, I mean, that's that's something I think I believe that is innate in us. And um, you know, how is because here's the thing: like when I hear when some people might hear that, oh yeah, I just take out my aggression on the mat or on the bag or whatever. It's particularly these days, they're thinking. This is a very aggressive guy. He's got anger issues. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so, what? What? What is? What, what is your feeling about that? What is your response to 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 that? I mean, particularly in trying to get people to understand where you're coming from, right? So, oh. um, yeah, I've I've thought about that. Like, you know, just wondered, do I have anger issues? Is there something wrong with me, or what? What's going on here? Um, but I think you've got the anger issues if you've got anger issues you have the anger issues regardless of whether you hit a bag or not mm. and um yeah i don't think the martial arts causes the anger issues i think if anything it's an outlet uh for somebody that might have anger issues um you know there's just something very stress relieving about hitting a heavy bag as hard as you can for an hour and then you know it's, you can't win against a bag mm. it's it's always going to win mm. um but there's like you said there's something very visceral something just putting as much effort into something as you can mm. for an hour and just hitting it as hard as you can you know there's just something very I don't even know addictive about that. Um, and, and the same thing is true of jujitsu. Um, you know, I, I'm rolling with another adult man and, you know, we're trying to choke each other, break each other's arm, you know, and, and, I mean, we're not really, but you, you stop right before you actually do choke them out or they break your arm. You know, you stop right at that point. And there's just something very, real about it um you know in this in this world we've gotten so far from real mm. uh, you know we live in air conditioned houses go to air conditioned office buildings air conditioned cars we eat prepackaged processed food um you know everything is done for us everything is handed to us and just rolling around on the mat trying to tap another guy out and he's trying to do the same to you. There's just something very real about that. And it just kind of brings you back to reality. And I don't know, it's, it's just it's it's just something that I have just really enjoyed doing. Well, there's nothing pretty about it either. You, no. That's not something you can package up nice and neat, you know. Now, granted, there are rules around it. I mean, whether you you know see different competitions, UFC or boxing or any any of the other sports, even to like tournament type uh, style things, particularly in BJJ, um, you know, like geese get messed up, right? <laughs> things get torn. You know, once in a while, you'll 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 see a little a blo- you know a little or a lot of blood on the floor. But that's like, yeah, there's no <clears throat> there's no making it pretty because ultimately it's it's not. And when it comes down to the just the you know, our, lo- our comp, I say, I hate to say lowest because I don't like to put, um, you know, I don't want to put a value on it. It's just that a common denominator amongst all of us is that, that, that physicality. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you know, whether you try to, uh, intellectualize it away, or, you know, try to tame it so that we can live in a kind of a tame society or such, it makes yeah. it a little bit easier to, uh, to do business, you know, in contracts versus in, Fist fights, <laughs> you know. What I mean? It's like, oh, let's let's see how let's let's uh, let's negotiate this on paper versus oh, let's 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 do a little fist fight. And see whoever wins yeah. gets gets the better price or something like that, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. But there are, but there are there are, there are limits uh, there are limits to that. And it's interesting when you talk, you talk about a BJJ because there's not necessarily that hitting. And by the way, I think when people and I think you know it's something I I think about 
old sitcoms, right? When they think, oh, you want to hit something or whatever. Oh, you just imagine. And they could put like a little, you know, a floating head of like a, the person's boss on the thing. And like, you got to hit or whatever. And, but that's like, that's like focused violence on an actual person, right? Right. And I don't know about you, but I, I, most of the time when I'm going, I don't have any particular person in mind when I'm hitting something. They might have been the cause of it, right. right? It's like, oh my gosh, I'm having challenges with my oldest daughter or something like that. But then the thing that's left is is just that stress inside. It's not necessarily, okay, I'm, it's because of her and I'm thinking about that. Although I'm sure that happens uh, at times as well. But when you talk about uh, BJJ... It's not just you're not hitting something necessarily. It's that just that physical exertion, right? Yeah. But beyond that, though, so you know whether you're hitting a bag or you're rolling, it's there's physical exertion, but you're still thinking. Yes, there's it's still there's still a mental portion to it, right? So it, people thinking that they're they're, they're, they're um, they might not be initiated in in any kind of combat sports or any like physical contact. Um, in a controlled environment, the thinking that oh, it's just pure, it's just pure physicality, Instinct. pure val- violence. But that's not the case at all, particularly when when you're rolling, right? Right. A- absolutely. Yeah. And if if you're not thinking about what you're doing, if you're thinking about oh, did I pay my water bill or you know wh- whatever, I mean you're you're gonna get hit if that's what you're doing or you're going to get tapped out i mean you you have to keep your head in it and um that's one of the things that's attractive about it is that uh it's an it's a complete it's an entire body experience you you have to be in it physically but also mentally um and you you can't do it any other way Uh, but it, it also has that aspect like you're saying that physicality um you know, have you ever worked out in the yard and, you know, you work all day out in the hot sun putting up, it could be something as simple as a fence or something. That's what I was doing last weekend. And then, you, you know, you work your butt off and then at the end of it, you look back and you feel a sense of accomplishment because it was so much work, so much effort to to do on your part. But, you know, as, as simple as it is, in my case, a fence, you're like, yeah, I did that that's up there because of me and and I kind of feel the same sense of accomplishment in um, martial arts. There's no shortcuts. Mm. You can't just go to the store, buy a black belt, put it on and boom, you're a black belt, right? It it doesn't work that way. There's no shortcuts. People will find you out in an instant. You know, (laughs) you step foot on the mat, they're like, you're not a black belt. You just bought that. Um, And and I, I think that's part of the attraction is that there are no shortcuts, that it is something you can do for your entire life. Um, It's a lot of effort, and therefore there's that sense of accomplishment, sense of a job well done when you're moving forward, when you're moving up in rank. And, you know, you're like, all right, this is is working. This is good. Um, And you you feel like you did something and you, you know, worked at it. Let's talk about this. Uh, I mean, you, you mentioned getting the sparring and the Thai boxing before. Um, was that something that you had experienced or even just the, had the, hit, uh, the memory of? Or was there anything from when you were a, 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 a child going through karate that you were able to bring to, to that? Um, Not really. Um, unfortunately, the, the studio that I went to as a kid... For whatever reason, we didn't spar a whole lot, so it was mostly just forms, you know, just just the pure intellectual part of it, um, and that could also be why I wasn't into it as as much at the same time. Now that I think about it, hmm. but when you started, uh, you know, now training with the kickboxing and the Muay Thai, there was contact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what was that experience like transitioning from? No, I mean, did you were you did you grow up having fist fights and having no. bullies and that type of so I mean like from somebody that's completely didn't grow up in that environment you weren't necessarily you know you you weren't a, a scrapper <laughs> right no, not at all. getting into a, a, a situation now where you've got again other grown men there that are looking to to make a bit of contact what how did you introduce yourself to that what was that process like for you. 
Oh, uh, that's you know I never thought about that. I, I remember the first couple of times it's like, well he's he's hitting me, you know. It's like <laughs> he just hit me again, you know. There's that kind of days like what just happened, kind of reality check, and then it's like, well what am I gonna do? I guess I better hit him back or something, you know. I, I didn't really know what to do at first, it, and then you know you, after you've been hit a couple of times, you just kind of adjust to it and settle in and you go okay you know um but it, it also the, the shock comes out of it mm. you know so now when i'm in this taekwondo class and somebody hits me it's you know just shake it off all right keep going um and, and it just kind of prepares you for you know any situation that you might have to deal with in real life because mm -hmm. that's uh, that's something that you know you just talked about it's like <clears throat> Because I'm assuming that these folks are are very gracious. They understand where you're coming from, right? Being a, a novice to all that, so they're not they're not going to town like, oh, hey, this is not, this is like an actual living punching bag for me. Yeah, like, they're taking so it easy. They're taking it, well. I mean, <laughs> every gym's got got it. Got to think. Yeah. Ultimately, you you learn how to navigate that a bit. Yeah. Right? But um, but that's that's something where I think beyond just the pain of it right because i think that's that's one thing with uh what with, with the fear is that you know you're, you're a lot of people fear the pain mm -hmm. but i think it's more and i think you're speaking to this it's more of like the shock factor yeah right in, in, in initially of like this guy's really i can't believe this guy's hitting me yeah, <laughs> yeah. because we're not well, walking around the mall bam 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 you know just going to go right. up the people right <laughs> Well, I can count on one hand the number of fights that I've seen in my entire life, let alone been in. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just not what we do in our society, right? And so when another dude puts on his gloves and starts hitting you, you're like, what is happening? This is this is weird. You know, what's going on here? Yeah. So even now, though, like when you go in, I mean, I, I think you're doing more uh, BJJ now, right? But you're sparring also with the Tang Soo or? Uh, yeah, I'm doing the Taekwondo and the BJJ. Oh, the yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, is there, um, would you, uh, the shock is no longer there, necessarily, because you kind of understand what's going on. Is there, do you, f do you feel, oh, do you feel any fear? Do you, are you feeling like, okay, I know I've rolled with this guy before, you got total confidence, or what? what is it like for you now getting into these, uh, you know, into the sparring and into the rolling with these guys? Um... Well, to to quote, I think Conor McGregor, um, you know, you either win or you learn, mm. and uh, I I think that's pretty profound, and I've kind of adopted that mindset. You know, I, either I'm going to beat this guy and I'm going to teach him, or he's going to beat me and he's going to teach me something. But I can always I can always stand to learn something from my partner. Um, and you know that's I always try when I'm in BJJ I always try and roll with the black belts or you know roll with roll with the the master mm. um, you know you just I, I know they can beat me but it's not about winning it's it's about uh, just being as good as you can be and it's a safe environment also yeah. right because you know that okay and at, at, at the worst is I get some discomfort. Because my joint's not supposed to go that way. <laughs> I'm actually supposed to be breathing right now. Okay, yeah. let, me, let, let me just tap here. So, it, it, was there? Uh, did it? How long did it take you to kind of get over that feeling of like, oh my gosh, I can't breathe? You know, there's panic there. There's like, oh, this is doesn't feel right or whatever. Um, did you get acclimated to that pretty pretty quickly? Or, well, I I'd say with the sparring, mm -hmm. I. That was the first time I encountered something like that. So I, I think the first time you encounter something like that, it's going to take a little bit longer for the shock to wear off. And I think that probably took about six months. Oh, okay. Uh, with the BJJ, it was, it was much quicker. Um, it's, it's a real tight, like, family environment. And, you know, we laugh and joke and, you know, we'll, you can even talk while you're rolling with the guy, while you're, it's, which is kind of weird. My wife always asks when we're talking about what we did over the weekend while we're trying to choke each other out, you know. Um, <laughs> but um, 
we we do you know like hey how's your you know daughter doing or whatever and but there's this there's this attitude of respect and we're all trying to help each other and we're not there to kill each other mm -hmm. we're we're there to all of us get better in the studio and to help each other and if i'm rolling with a white belt you know i slow down and you know help him out and you might want to try this you might want to put your foot here right now you know and just trying to help him it's i mean what what uh do i gain from beating a white belt and tapping him out 16 times in a round you know that's 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 not what we're about so um you know i might try and i might tap him out once and then do the same move again slower and walk him through how to do it so that he sees what happens if he doesn't counter it, but let him counter it. You know what I mean? Is there a bit of that, though, where um, kind of ego comes into play, where especially if you've been doing it for a while, and then somebody of a lower rank than you or hasn't been doing it as long as you gets you? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. There, there Definitely ego comes into play, you know, which, you know, this guy... He's been doing it for six months. What's he get me like that for? Um, or, you know, the the other is true, too, which, you know, I can beat up on the black belts pretty good in, in the Taekwondo. And, you know, ego comes into play there. It's like, hey, I just took on a black belt, and, you know, and I'm not a black belt. Um, and I, I think that's just part of being human. I, I try not to let it get the better of me. Um, but I'm not going to lie. That... It, it does. <laughs> there's there's something satisfying about beating up a black belt. I you know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely goes both ways, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Dude, this was great. Yeah, we can talk about this all 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 day, man. But uh, uh, I appreciate your insights, dude. And uh, like I said, I mean, it's 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 very different when you you come across folks that. Are, are they're, they're like I don't even want to say it. they're lifers, man. They're they're they they can they can call themselves martial artists, right? They don't say I do BJJ or I do uh, TKD or whatever it might be. It's like I mean, yeah, no, I am this, right? You know, and they're not and they're not uh, they're typically they're not they're not married to just one style or another. Like you know, that's that's going to be their their the thing. Like they, there's there's a play there's room for them to grow all around. Right. So, it's great, man. Dude, Jonathan, thanks again, man. It was awesome. Thanks for having me, man. That was fun. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that conversation with Jonathan as much as I did. I really appreciated his perspective on training uh, in the martial arts, but also the way that he and his family use the martial arts as a way to connect with each other. Um, that's it for today's episode, folks. Again, just keep your eyes and uh, ears peeled. For more information about the upcoming webinar series with Dr. Megan Horn on women's self-defense. And uh, that's it. This is Philip with the Everyday Fighter Podcast. Talk to you next time. <laughs>